Something that you will hear people say about variable speed pumps when they're told that, well, you need to run the pump for long periods of time at a low RPM. This is the advantage of a variable speed pump. Uh, people who don't like variable speed pumps will often say, well, you can't run it at low RPM. What if you have, you know, a salt system, something like that? Well, then you need to run it at a higher RPM because the salt system needs to generate chlorine and it takes a long time to do that. And that is true. That is good information. But what I want to show you with this video here is I want to show you at what RPM would we achieve the flow rate that we need to close the flow switch in a salt chlorine system. And that's the real question here. So on this system, I have a, a two inch suction line in use here and a two inch discharge line as well that we will be monitoring the flow through a digital flow meter. The pump is a one and a half horsepower Pentair Superflow variable speed pump. Filter is 150 square foot Hayward cartridge filter. And what you can see here is that the pump's already actually running. We have 500 RPM. And let's take a look at our flow rate here. So our flow rate currently is 14 gallons per minute. Let's look at our power consumption here, top right corner, just under 63 watts of power, which is to say a 60 watt light bulb. That's how much that's how much power we're consuming right now. So here's the real question. What is the minimum flow that you need for a salt system? Well, a couple of uh, numbers referenced that I can find are the IntelliChlor from Pentair at a minimum of 25 gallons per minute. And there's a couple of different reference points for Hayward systems. Uh, I was able to find a couple of references, one for 15 gallons per minute minimum. And in specific, I found a revision 1.59 for the Hay or the Aquarite XL um, manual, and it shows 11 gallons per minute being the minimum. The point being here is that at 500 RPM and scarcely more power than a 60 watt light bulb, in all likelihood, I'm achieving enough flow to close the flow switch on one of these Hayward systems. In all likelihood. Let's take a look now. What if we had the Pentair system? Well, I've got 900 RPM programmed in here, which again is very little. It's a very low RPM. If you didn't have a flow meter, you might even be wondering, am I even moving any water at all? And the answer would be yes. You'd be moving about 25 gallons per minute. Very interesting. And again, let's look at that power consumption. Top right, just under 120 watts. So, you know, just over a 100 watt light bulb is how much power you're consuming right now, but you're achieving 25 gallons per minute, which according to the Pentair literature would be enough to close the flow switch and safely generate your chlorine with an IntelliChlor system. So it doesn't actually take very much power or a very high RPM at all in order to be able to generate chlorine for long periods of time while still consuming very low power during those periods of time. And again, that's the advantage of the variable speed pump here. And just a, you know, a common thing that you'll hear people say about them when in actuality it's, it's not true. It doesn't take that much RPM to, to generate chlorine with a salt system and it doesn't consume very much power. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.